Howdy folks, I've got a replay for you between Port and Carolfex. Looks like Stieglitz is a spectator in the lobby. I was not, I didn't see this replay, this is just sent to me. So first time, we've got Caro starting with Shadow, Port starting with Fire, he's got the Devils and Shredder. Looks like Caro is probably going for a Nasty, that's the Caro special. Uh, Port Micro is around it, very good. And this puts Caro in a pretty bad position, I'd say. He's got a lot fewer units. So this Dread Charger is definitely going to die. Okay. Uh, well, he's... I think actually if uh, Kara... Re if uh, Port retreats... Okay. Scavenger... The Dread Charger didn't die, but uh, he played a 75 cost spell, so that's definitely a bad trade. So right out the gate, uh, very good tier 1 trade for Port. Um, so the Dread Charger was killing one squad of Sunstriders for 75, but the other squad is going to kill it, so the uh, life weaving was definitely not worth it. And... Um, Port cleans up with a commanding lead in the center. He spent slightly more than uh, Carol, but actually Carol has to spawn a new unit, so Port is in the lead for sure. Port takes a well, Carol takes a well. And um, let's see what Port's gonna do with these units. I think these units should be getting over here to get some ground presence while these guys heal up. Port has decided to keep everybody chilling in the base. There we go, moving out with the thugs a little bit. Going back. He seems to be a little scared of the Dread Charger with those thugs, and Caro takes a second well. Very greedy, I'd say. Um, however, it's kind of far, so if Caro is not, if, if Port is not carrying Sunder, it might be fine. Port decides to chill and take a well also. Um, yeah, I personally don't agree with that because right now Port has the huge tempo lead. Uh, Caro taking this, he has uh, recovered all his tempo lead, right? Like. Um, yeah, I think the options that Port should be thinking about here is either, like, taking a well over here to just lock uh, Kara out of the map, or to um, rush him, uh, because Port has a lot more units, so he can make really good trades. Um, uh, yeah, so now we're getting to the point where there's a lot of Forsaken, um, so they can be a little bit scary with Frenzy. But thugs are trading super well, so um, I think Port is still going to hold this position. Uh, focus fire could be a little bit better. Uh, Kara is doing very well, I think. Um, Kara is kind of trading back into equality, and um, this nasty could be huge, and it's not. So these thugs are going to make short work of these Forsaken, especially with another thought of the uh, Sun Shredders. And Port is going to hold this sun line. Okay, the uh, Frenzy on the Forsaken. I think the thugs will die. Oh, thugs live just a little bit. Uh, this squad of uh, Forsaken are going to pick them out. Um, and Kara is staying in this for sure, actually. Especially as we get into a position, I think, uh, yeah, as we get into a position where um, Port can't really play with thugs, then actually he probably could play thugs right now. Port is not playing at his power limit, I'd say that's the problem here. And that's letting Caro come back and maintain this position. Now Caro has got a big tempo lead. Um, four squads of Forsaken is terrifying, and Port decides to take a well. Interesting. Got a couple of preemptive sun shredders just to uh, avoid the cliffing, but yeah. The the good thing about this is as long as Port keeps enough power for an eruption, then he can always erupt because these squads are going to have to band together to snipe. Um, and Kara is just assuming that Port has no power for eruption because he's bunching up. There we go, there's the eruption. Um, or maybe he thinks he can just uh, push through it anyway. And he might, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of Forsaken. Yeah, I think that is... that roll's gonna drop. Oh, maybe not. It's close. I've, I've been making a lot of calls so far. The well might be safe, actually. Uh, if we had seen a... Uh... Oh, that's so close. <laughs> Alright. Uh, one, one shot's not gonna do it. It's gonna take two shots. Oh, it did. Never mind. I've been making a bunch of bad calls. Alright, so that worked. Uh, on the other hand, Caro invested tons of tons of power into that, and now Port is going to be able to lock him out of Tier 2 for sure. So I think Port just kind of holds his position, goes Tier 2, and Caro is done. Um, 
It looks like he's afraid of the nasty. Port is not playing more units. He's letting Caro play some more units, so he's not actually going to trade super hard. Yep, Dread Charger trades so well, even even when it's lost some health, because Sun Chargers have such a low health. <laughs> A little bit of trading. I think Kara is uh, gonna be doing fine here, probably actually, because again, Port's not playing at his power limit. Probably good, nasty. Oh, all right. That was a very, very gutsy. Okay, good eruption. Uh, yeah, very gutsy tier two, but with the eruption, I think. Uh, I think it's going to depend on if Karo is out of Forsaken Charges, which it looks like, <laughs> given that he just played a Nox Trooper. Um, yeah, it looks like Karo's out of Forsaken Charges. That may make the difference between this well being rushable and not. Um, Lava Field is going to clean up all of this, or it's just a little shy of the Lava Field. Um, but yeah, I think I think the orb is actually probably dying, and the preemptive life weaving. So, Kara's probably not uh, using an attack here with the Sunder, um, which is a tier 1 unit, using a single tier 2 spell. So, well, two tier 2 spells, you got the Ravage. Um, so we might see a orb trade, but uh, this is still quite a bad position for Kara for uh, Port, because um, even with the orb trade, uh, Port has bound an extra 100 power. On the other hand, the supported Sunder might be taking two wells. Uh, although Kara might be kicking this well back too. Okay, Kara is fine. Um, Port now has to defend. Kara is very low on. Looks like it was nasty. I don't think the nasty was terribly effective, but it may allow this uh, orb to drop. We'll see the dread charger. Yeah, I think that the well is dropping there. So yeah, Kara looks like he's in a very commanding position. Um, both players are even on walls. Caro has more units on the field, although Caro is out of Forsaken, so he can only spawn them occasionally, which is uh, pretty huge because Forsaken are, you know, if you spawn Nox, you're just going to lose to Sun Striders. Um, and Port has invested an extra 100 power in the tier 2, which he has not uh, gotten back yet. The life weaving, I don't really agree with all this use of life weaving. I think. Um, yep, there we go. And now Port can go tier 2 really fast. Look, he might even want to come over here to try and hold this position. And Port takes a well. Interesting. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> We're trying to keep things interesting, that's for sure. Players are even on wells. Kara takes a well also. Port's got a lot of power in the bank. So it is Caro. Um, Port can start spamming Sunderers though, while Caro is out of Forsaken. So as long as Port can stop tier 2, especially if you've got Scorched Earth, uh, looks like he's not running Scorched Earth. Um, so here we go. Is Port trying to rush it or not? Looks like he's going to go back to this tier 2 position. This could get nastied. Okay, he's decided to hit the Dread Charger first a little bit, and probably go tier 2 in a second. There we go, there's the tier 2. Life weaving on the Dread Charger. Um, again, I'm not really sure it's worth it. I mean, I guess if you save your Dread Charger and kill two squads of Sunstriders, it, it's kind of worth it. Um, but I don't think either the Dread or the Sunstriders are particularly valuable. Okay, there we go. Uh, offensive Reaver. Um, this is going to be hard for Port to deal with if he didn't have, you know, 300 and change power. With all that much power, Wildfire Enforcer should, uh, and just a chance can take care of this and save pretty, pretty easily. We've been doing a lot of work. There's a lot of units here wiped out by the lava field, and um, it looks like Port's gonna hold. Maybe. Actually, no, I think Hero's dropping the orb. There we go. Um, Port's got a lot of units on the field, though. Um, and this is a good matchup for Pure Fire, so. A lot of players that I've been playing with recently, not going to name names, but uh, one of them is in this group. <laughs> um, a couple of players I've been playing with recently have uh, taken to quitting really early, and 
in situations like this, right, where, where if they were port right now, they'd be quitting because they've lost too much. But port is... Oh, interesting. Um, I didn't know you could cancel that. Um, port's got a good matchup, right? So as this goes into a higher power level, sure, Carol is kicking balls left and right. If this goes into higher power level, Port could still make a comeback. So certainly Kira's winning. Let's let's nobody uh nobody be confused about that. Are we gonna have a life weaving? Oh, Kara decided to Nasty instead of life weaving, I guess is more power efficient because Nasty was spread around and Kara uh that didn't work. Kira's going for another push. I would be very surprised if this succeeds. Um he's going for life weaving and maybe a freeze and then maybe a nasty. Ward's got a lot of power, I think, just with the units. Oh, oh, okay, and the heal comes off. So this is still, still anybody's game. Again, I want to say Taro has uh, a sizable advantage in power, just because of the way the trading has gone. Um, but Port has a good tempo and a very good matchup, so it is. Just nasty. Caro is investing a lot of power that's um, kind of getting wasted. There we go, and uh, Port saves as well. Defensive wall. Again, I think Port's strategy here is he wants to stall out the game because as the power level goes up, Purifier's ability to attack increases, and in the tier 3, Purifier is one of the few decks that can beat souls. Um, because Jagger is just really strong. Kara is going for more. He um, looks like he might be going for a little bit of a uh, tricky snipe here. He's going to freeze the hits on the And um, he's decided not to play Lost Fruit, which is a little bit interesting, I guess, because the Fire Sworn is already there. And he's hoping he can take it out just with um, the Nightcrawler and uh, Dark Elves. I think he can, actually. Yeah. So very nice push from Caro. I think this is uh, a lot of players ask, how do you attack with Shadow? And here you see Caro was using literally nothing but Shadow. He used the one freeze, um, so I guess that's slightly different than you could use with like a pure Shadow. But uh, you know, pure Shadow's got other things like corpse explosion and things like that that weren't even other warped that would make the freeze potentially not needed. Caro is taking a well. Um, Hard to say if I agree with that. The problem is that Port is into tier 3 levels of power right now, and taking that well as we go into tier 3, um, I'm just not sure. I gave Nasty on the Reaver, which I, I guess was kind of worth it, and Port takes a well also. We're getting closer and closer to Port's win condition. Despite Port being down a well this whole time, well, not the whole time, but right now, uh, Caro and Port takes two wells. Okay, Port has decided not to go for tier 3. Um, which is probably a good call, uh, because tier 3 is maybe a little bit too early. Hard to say. Um, I, I, uh, by far an expert in this matchup. I mean, I've played it, I've played it, but, uh, the little nuances about tier 3 timing, I'm not sure. Probably I would have gone tier 3. I know Tagi definitely would have gone tier 3. Um, I think as players have higher skill, they tend to want to stay tier 2 to kind of prove they've got the micro to stay in there. Which I think is what Port's doing. So, um, I think this is very good on Kara to keep pushing tier 2. As long as he stays aggressive, then that's going to prevent pure fire from uh, pushing aggressively. And Kara's going for a split attack here, trying to keep um, all of Port's units bound. Uh, now, Kara doesn't have a good way to deal with these uh, enforcers, actually. Um, okay, four enforcers charge uh, Lost Reaver. <laughs> Held this gun, we get a freeze to, to hit the enforcers, but that is a dead loss reaver. And I think we're seeing the position where um, Caro is holding on here. Uh, sorry, uh, Port's holding on here. I keep getting their main names mixed up. Okay, we're gonna see a tier 3 from Caro for sure. There we go, tier 3. And Port has a lot of power bound in tier 2 units. So, oh, and he does have the Scorched Earth. Um, so that tier 3 is falling. And Kara cancels it, that's good. And now we see how devastating this position looks in favor of Port. Because uh, Kara can't tier 3, he's gonna get Scorched Earth wherever he goes. So as long as, um, yeah, 
at some point, Kuru is going to run out of steam attacking, right? Because Port Port keeps using his units. Kuru is trading. Uh, he's he's trading basically power for um, for tempo, and now we're going to see the tempo the the power swing back in Port Sticker, and he might be able to go tier three. Looks like Kara might be trying another tier three. Port's trying to stay in position so that he can scorch it as soon as it comes up. There we go, and there's the scorch. There's the fire dancer. Which is gonna require another cancel, I think. Lava field uh, hit these guys, and Caro is spinning his wheels. Yeah, as we're saying, right? Okay, there we go. Um, their Scorch Earth now has a cooldown, so it's not going to be so easy. You see a freeze. Scorch will be able to hit before it comes out. Uh, oh, I'm I'm confused about that tier three. Are we playing tier three just for? Uh, the Enforcer's gonna have to body block this to prevent a nasty. Uh, and Karo decides to nasty even while um, these guys are frozen. And he's playing an offensive aura or kind of defensive, hard to say. Here's a Scorched Earth. And freeze again. Okay, we see a Lyle King, we'll probably kill this. Or maybe another Fire Dancer. And it comes up. Ooh, ooh, that was bad. Uh, the orb went up and Caro cancelled it. And he could have repaired it, but instead he lost the orb and he didn't get the refund. He lost the full power of the orb. So that is going to be coming back. I'm, I'm uh, actually really surprised Caro is going to stay in this, I would say, um, based on how. based on that fact that, that Caro just lost a ton of power. Because he ports got tons of power himself. Um, but as has been the theme kind of so far, he's not been spending it. I see wildfire. I need to learn how to use wildfire like port and some of these uh, pure fire guys. But it's interesting, we're not seeing any skyfires. Um, skyfire would definitely be my go to against these um, immunic compositions. Hero's gonna attempt for tier 3 again. And I'm sure port's gonna be right there with the scorched earth. There we go, there's the scorched earth. Carol continues to report continuously to get a freeze, which gets the uh, fire dancer, and tier 3 has to cancel. There's a chance um, Caro can get the tier 3 spot here. Especially, oh, he's decided to go tier 3 over there. And caro has got a position on the map here, so he can, I guess, wait until Scorched Earth goes, and then as soon as Scorched Earth goes, he can cancel and go tier 3. And yeah, we can see we've reached a state where the power level is just so high, even though Kara has invested so much power. Um, okay, cancels, and we're going to see a tier 3 there. No, the Nightcrawler has moved over there, and um, Kara's going to have to tier 3 in that same spot. Yeah, so anyway, we see, we've reached a, we see a point where the power level is so high that it doesn't really matter, like, who had power earlier in the game, right? Both players have just tons of power. You can see the void power is like four times as high as the actual power from Wells. So, um, just by virtue of, you know, staying in the game for 18 minutes. And yeah, I think Port is playing this strategically very well. And there we go, there's a rallying banner just to absolutely stop the tier 3 coming out. And I think Port is deciding not to go tier 3 himself because he thinks that's kind of risky. Maybe. We've seen a lot of Lost Reavers, we might be running out of Lost Reaver charges, and, um, you know, if all else fails, Port's actually doesn't have that much power. Where did Port's power go? Oh, he's going tier 3, there we go. So he is deciding to go tier 3, right in the face of me saying that he's not going tier 3. Um, well, still works, and now Kara is going for a full-on push. And this, I think, um, my call is this is going to drop, actually. In between the life moving, we've got the disenchant. The orb is coming up, he might get a jugger out, but, uh, ooh, uh, backlash, you don't see that very often. Um, defensively, that worked really well, actually. Um, yeah, okay. So, change of mind. Uh, Kara is not going to rush this down. Actually, he might. It's hard to say. Uh, if, he, if he motivated one of those Storm Singers, yeah, and it comes down. Never mind. I feel like every call I've made this game has been wrong, just as soon as they made the call. Um, but, uh, Kara's gotta be running low on, uh, Lost Reaver charges, 
and Horton got a tier 3 in or out, he can come back to tier 3 again. Um, I don't see this going anyway except down for Karo. Karo is pushing the rallying banner, and if he can kill this, then he can go tier 3 again in range of the Scorched Earth, so maybe not the biggest advantage. And Karo deciding to play tier 2 units, uh, instead of waiting for the rallying banner to die. And Karo is defended this side here. Horde has, has uh, you see, just jet. But he's continuing to play tier 2 units, so he doesn't have power to drag him out just yet. Okay, backlash for defense. Uh, again, we're, he's keeping up that strategy of putting the map on lock. And, I mean, that's a strategically very sound move, right? As long as Karo can't tier 3, then um, I think Port's in no danger of losing this. Especially as Reaver Chargers are coming low. I feel like right now Karo is spawning them pretty much as they appear. Giants are getting in the action. We're close to a Jugger, about 50 more power. Mm, slightly sloppy in my crew, probably, but uh, still fine. This is, you know, I guess this is regular replay, not a review. Ooh! Moon! Interesting. Um, this might be a push for Karo, but uh, here's the Juggernaut, and never mind, there's Backlash too. Yeah, you can see how powerful Backlash is with uh, all this power, which is, I guess, another reason. Okay, Port is deciding to wait just outside of the R range. Um, but yeah, that's another reason why Port's strategy of just wait and high power will, will win the day, because of Backlash. Your forces um, are under attack. And you can see Port's not using Backlash offensively, because offensively it kind of sucks. But um, defensively, actually, it's been it's been very good at stopping those pushes and giving Pure Fire just a little bit of oomph that it needs. Um, I have likely you can see the backlash, right? It did like 500 damage, so cost as much as two eruptions and did less damage than two eruptions. Um, but it killed the units, right? Which is the important part. So yeah, I think I think this game may have convinced me. I will probably be adding backlash to my Pure Fire deck. We'll see, actually. I'm not sure what, uh, what's Port, what has Port dropped? Because he's running the full tier 1, he's got the Scorched Earth. I would be dropping Scorched Earth for Backlash, would be the way I would be playing this, I think. So, I'm not sure what he's lost. Possibly Scythe Fiends? Um, which if so, actually it's probably Scythe Fiends, because you saw how effectively Kara was pushing with Dark Elves. Anyway, uh, enough speculation. Um, I really enjoyed this game, I think this is a classic. Um, fire versus souls, and I think this really shows the power of knowing your win condition versus, uh, you know, it's a classic battle of uh, tactics versus strategy, and this one strategy won out, plus a good matchup. Um, so good game, both these players, Port and Carol. Hope you guys like this, and feel free to send me more replays if you want me to cast them.